Hello everyone, welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training here. It's one o'clock Pacific time. Welcome to fmtraining.tv where we provide daily live training and frankly some awesome demos and great motivational material for you regarding the FileMaker platform. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this one screen right here and I just want to say welcome to Dave. Welcome to from the UK. We got people from Netherlands. I got people from Brazil. We have actually more international people here than I think U.S. people. So if you're uh, watching uh, on YouTube or you're watching on Twitch, feel free to comment and let us know. I'm actually move the screen a little bit more so I'm looking at it like this way here. So as opposed to behind me. So I'm trying to keep, kind of move it and keep it in touch. Um, yeah. So welcome everyone to uh, today. We're going to be covering relationships today um, and some a little bit deeper side of relationships, although people have basic questions, we want to answer, ask, ask and answer those questions as well. Make sure that you put your questions into, hang on, let me adjust that. Make sure that you put your questions over here. Um, attempt to keep the questions on topic. If the questions are really off topic, we might hold those till the end. I'll have David, who's here helping me today. David Castillo, are you there? I am. Hey, everyone. So Dave is going to help uh, keep track of things, and then if he has questions uh, that I miss, uh, then uh, he will help uh, make sure we bring those back before the end of the session. I try to answer every question that's asked, um, but uh, some people ask questions up front that take us off topic, and I want to try to keep us on topic if possible. But feel free to ask. We just might shelve it for later. So uh, Arkansas, right on. So that's... Uh, it's a uh, brooder man one brooder man in rochester new york okay so we have some u.s people here i was like wondering like why we have all these eu people so the u.s people here welcome uh rochester new york hopefully you have your head down how's the uh, virus thing in rochester right uh probably better than downtown uh, uh new york i imagine right so that it's just a location with a very confined space and people tend to uh uh, be close together and then uh, it's just uh, it's just I guess that stuff tracks around pretty easily I think I might have one engineer working out of home who might have it we'll see what happened but he's one of these younger guys that goes out and meets everyone very social person so as a result of that then that's where you would get that um, anyway so uh, I'm not overly concerned about a bunch of 25 year olds with this because they generally don't have a problem and then we have uh, right on from uh, Atlanta so it looks like it's a uh, Looks like Monica. Monica, do I have that right? Or uh, if I don't have that right, let me know. But welcome everyone to training. Uh, Eddie's there, right on Eddie. In fact, Eddie, I remember Eddie, that's great. Welcome to the live training. So, so up front, let's talk about about three or four or five minutes of your, uh, you know, yesterday was so, so well received about kind of that opening kind of cool, motivational coolness. Try to show you things that I think are cool uh, before we dive into a topic which, could be a little dry, maybe boring. Um, if you're learning the FileMaker platform, then it'll be new for you. But let's just talk about our motivational piece real quick. So yesterday, once again, I remind everyone that it's really great that you're learning about the FileMaker platform because the power this platform is very powerful. And you have the ability to change people's lives for the better, to help their business be better, to help these people not work so many hours at the office desperately trying to get their jobs done to make them more efficient. Like I said, I've received letters from people who get some of our work and get some of our solutions and they're in tears because their lives have changed um, for the better because they were doing all this. And I, I mean this very, she actually said, my wife is in tears and we can't thank you enough. That's really awesome. Um, and there's a lot of, I think that happens a lot. We don't hear about it. But when you get to make people's lives better, and the FileMaker platform is really great for that. You know, people who are stuck, even organizations that are stuck doing some really inefficient things. And, you know, Salesforce is kind of a bridge too far. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, customize well. Trying to do something with Microsoft is just, you know, always on the deep end of the pool. Um, and whether you know pricing it even makes sense and so the idea is that the FileMaker platform gives us this really great spot to customize and create a great solution for people so um, let's talk about what is the really cool thing for today and some of you probably have seen this before I have never I never used one until two days ago what we're talking about is the idea of a um, 
a uh, basically a pop-out drawer and once again this may not be new for you but I can just tell you that I've known about it, I've seen I thought it was cool it's a little bit of a hack but I think it can be worthwhile so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop up a website here this is not a demo I created yesterday we showed a demo by some uh, the Gen Com folks in Japan it was about doing the cropping if you had the image you could crop it FileMaker was super awesome today I'm gonna show or I'm just gonna talk about this because I end up using this internally um, actually you're gonna see this you know, we took this technique and, and borrowed their code from the digital fusion guys Dave Wood and some of the folks at digital fusion there in Australia these people are great they really are they make great demos I love promoting them and they're just developers that are down under and they uh, and they come up with some really great samples. So this one right here is beautiful, uh, easy drawer menus, drawer menus or slide out menus uh, is kind of the idea. And once again, it's where someone took a feature of FileMaker and found a really unorthodox kind of hack for it, if that makes sense. So, um, and then we got, Bob, uh, looks like Bob from Point Richmond, California, awesome. And uh, yeah, and Monica, thanks for Monica for being there in Atlanta. So real quick, I'm gonna uh, move myself here. I need to find it. So it's called Beautiful Menus. It's a download. Um, if you want to get more information on this and what you need to do is, here's a link right here. I'm gonna have David pop the link up uh, on both the chats, uh, either in YouTube or in uh, Twitch. And uh, and so you can go down and download this file. So you open up this FileMaker file right here, and you're like, oh, well, that's really amazing. And here's the thing, is that you press the menu, the hamburger menu button. This is called a hamburger menu, for those of you who don't know what this is. You see these all over the place. You press them all the time. But the technical term, if you can believe it, it's a hamburger. So that's the bun and the bun and the meat in the middle. I guess you call it a sandwich, but they call it hamburger for whatever reason. You press the button, and it basically slides out so it slid out it slides in with it's animated I don't know if you can see it if you're getting the full frame rate let me take a look and see how it looks on YouTube well I it's about a once again about a minute minute and a half delay but it slides out then you can press a button here or do something or do whatever you want to do and then navigate and have that work so this is a really awesome technique it uses a slide control and because the slides are animated um, because the slides are animated, you can um, have it slide its way out. And so it's really neat. Um, it typically, I normally see these from the left. I guess you could try to do it from the right. Um, but uh, as I remember, we tried it and there was a problem with coming from the right. But the idea is that if you go back into uh, layout mode, I'm gonna hit Command or Control L uh, with my feet. So I use the keyboard shortcuts on my uh, keyboard. Um, so Command or Control L, I go to layout mode. And uh, what you're gonna see over here is that you don't see it. In, a, in an ideal world, it would be like an element from a, a different layout. And so, so like, and right about now, the video is actually getting to you that I shot a minute ago. And so hopefully it uh, goes in and out here. Let's see what it, make sure you guys can see that. Does it look good on YouTube? Hopefully it does. Oh yeah, it slides in now. Good, so you can see that uh, the frame rate's good. So what you do is you can click on it. And when you click on it, it shows this box right here. So it's hidden. And so what is this and how does this work? Well, the very short version of this is that if you kind of double click this, it pops the slide control up. And what you're going to see is that you have three slides and you're on slide number three right now. And slide number two is the slide with information on it. And slide number one is blank. So slide, so it's a, kind of a sandwich slide. So the, the, the first slide and the third slide, there's nothing on them and they're invisible. The middle slide is where the content is, makes sense. And, um, and so what happens is when it first displays, it sets the default, right? And so um, the default, I think, if you come over here, yeah, so um, let's see, navigational dots, go to, I think it's targeting like the third slide, that kind of idea. So if you could slide it the other way, you could probably have it slide on from the right side of the screen as opposed to the left side. But basically it's right here. And if you want to edit it, you have to, you have to basically uh, pop up the slide control, double click it, then navigate to that slide, and then you could make your edits in here and do that. So that's a really cool solution. Hats off and, and tips, uh, hats off, you know, to the folks uh, at uh, Digital Fusion. They did a really great job with this. I don't know if Dave Wood worked on this one or not, but uh, 
it's a really good little sample file. Feel free to obviously use it, but uh, the credit goes to them. I'm just simply showing, I'm showing you things that inspire me. Now, this has been around for a while. It's not really new, but I never really needed it until the other day. Um, and, you know, it's it's cool. You could do this with like a popover window to a, to, to a point, but the sliding on and off the screen, the animation is what kind of makes it work, right? Does that make sense? So the that this the the popover uh, a popover menu is a button that spawns down and it, it can have some benefits too and then there's also of course uh, the uh card style window so really there's a we ought to have a session and david this brings up another one for you to add we needed the advanced session from yesterday if we haven't done i want to make sure you do it the advanced session on virtual lists and things like that we also want to do a, a session on api get that going uh, wiring in API inter interactions, which is not a simple conversation. Everyone thinks, oh, I'm going to do APIs in an hour. And yeah, no, it's APIs you could learn in an afternoon, actually all day. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a full day course to really learn how to integrate with APIs in a meaningful way. Um, but we could kind of do an overview and a, and a uh, introduction, I guess, for you on that. But but this one here, I think it's pretty easy to understand and, and uh, get into. So once again, hats off to the Digital Fusion folks. Uh, any questions about that? Yep, looks good. Everyone likes good. Eddie, uh, watching on iPad. Oh, okay, so awesome. So Eddie's watching this on YouTube on the iPad. That's kind of cool. Um, excellent. And so once again, reminder, if you're watching on Twitch, it's 1080. If you're on YouTube, it can be 1080 uh, high definition. So we are broadcasting simulcast out to both of those um, destinations. They're both, we're sending them 1080. YouTube will shift up and down automatically. Um, or you can manually adjust it um, on Twitch. It just kind of goes 1080 at uh, full speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shelve that for right now. And what I want to get into is this conversation about relational design. And I, I really need some guidance from you folks on this thing um, is to like what kind of questions you have about it. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, if you get into FileMaker and uh, I say create a new file and I create a blank file, right? The idea I'm going to do, I call a test file. I'm going to save it to the desktop. And when you create a new FileMaker file, it puts, it, it creates a single table for you. It has the uh, fields in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to tables. I'm going to rename the table um, people or contacts. I'm going to change it. And then I'm going to create a... Uh, a new table called invoices just for fun so we have this and if I create that and then it comes up with some uh, it comes up the, both of these when you define these they come up with their own primary key I like to re uh, always the way my naming convention is I always go ID and then that way the IDs group together um, and you can't really see me here but the IDs group together and so what we do is because uh, it's um, it's a modal dialogue is why I'm disappearing. So you say ID people, I say change, and then if I can come over to invoices, I can say ID invoice. And so I'm just kind of uh, setting up the basics right here, and uh, and so then uh, I uh, because we might want to um, because we might want to relate a person to invoices. You get into this idea of primary keys versus foreign keys, and I'm happy to have a conversation about that if people don't understand what that is. Um, but the idea is that I could be in invoices, and I say, well, this invoice might relate to a contact. So you might not know, know the term foreign key, but you know that really it, there might be a person or a contact associated or ID person associated with an invoice. So I could say ID people over here, and I can just create that. And so if it's a primary key, it always auto enters an ID number, right? If it's a primary key, it auto enters the ID number up here at the top. Um, if it's a foreign key, it doesn't auto enter, right? Very important. And so then if you uh, go to relationships, you can see that here we have these two right here. And I can connect ID people on the people side to the ID people over here, right? We can see that hopefully. Um, if I, uh, let me just go ahead and see if I can... Uh, let me zoom in here a little bit. This is kind of the way a world of FileMaker here, kind of goofy. So this is easier to do. Whoop. Okay, it's easier to do if you're uh, <laughs> if you're doing it in video. We clean it in post production. So ID people over here. We connect ID over here. Now, if you notice on the left side, there's one little. If you 
kind of it's kind of hard I'm trying to use my other hand but uh, right here you'll notice this one line and down here becomes what they call crow's feet that means that that it that it's a one to many relationship because that's a primary key but down here it's a foreign key and so you do that it connects across and so that is a basic relationship right there um, so yeah, so Dave White, awesome Dave White, thank you from the UK. We're going to be uh, keeping this going for you. Um, Dave is watching there on YouTube. I don't have any current questions on Twitch. So, um, so the idea is that is the basic relationship. And so if I go over here and I define, um, you know, I'll say I define, so I go to fields, I'm in people, I'm just going to say name, right? And then I can say uh, if I go over here to invoices, I can um, I can just say say that the invoices has a, a dollar amount, right? They're, well, it's I let's just say the invoice is one item. They can buy one item, and there is an amount, right? Uh, is that one M or two M's? Well, I think it's one M amount. Create like that, and that would be kind of technically a number field, right? And so once you have set these up. You have the relation set up, very basic right here, people, invoices, we connected them together. And you can come over here, we're in people, I can put Rick in here, for example, but we can't see the invoices yet. So what if we wanted to see the invoices? Well, the easiest way is I can pop another window right here so we can say invoices over here. And then on this layout here, we wanna make sure that we go ahead and drag um, fields over here. I wanna drag on the item right here and the amount right here. And so there's the item and amount. I go to browse mode. I'm going to make these windows much smaller over here. And so, um, and let's see. So, um, layout mode. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. So we can actually show related content. Now, the trick with this is that we have this primary key, and this is why, you know, and this is where using UUID gets a little interesting because I hate using UUID for training. And people go, well, why don't you want to use UUID for training? Because I'm going to show you what the, the primary key looks like over here on both of these. And they're really ugly, and it makes it hard to kind of visually, it's, it's a as a training aid, it really stinks. So here is the ID invoice right here. And if I come over here, this would be like the invoice number, but it's the primary key. Or the one on the right is the invoice number. The one on the left is the primary key for the contact of the person. So I can I can say there's that right there. If I go back to browse uh, mode and browse mode over here, um, when I create a new invoice, that's the primary key. It's this randomized scramble of code, and it's really if you're an advanced developer, especially if you're doing sync, then you don't have a problem with this because in your head you understand this already. But for training application, it's really difficult to train this. And, 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 and instantly, some people's brains, I just lost them with what just happened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out uh, the keys for it to be a serial number. Okay, And so I'll just say it's P. I'll just start at 1 for people 1. And I'm going to turn off the calculation. And let me see, go back to that. On creation, yeah. And then I'm going to turn off the uh, prohibit over there. And then I'm going to come over to the invoices and I'm going to turn off because what's doing is auto, the calculation right here is using this get UID. That's where it generates that long scramble mess. Once again, I think it's the default of kind of what FileMaker does because they're trying to code it so it's useful for basically more mid intermediate or senior level people. I just for training, I would rather say, so this is the invoice, I'll say INV, and it starts with the letter one. And uh, and so what I'll do is I'll hit OK. I've made these changes, so I'm gonna delete the record on there, so there's no records there. I'm gonna delete the record over here. I'm now I'm gonna create a new record on the person side. We have P1, this is Rick. And then if I create another new record, you have P2, so it's a serial number, I'll say Sally. So Rick is uh, contact one, Sally is contact two. If I come over here, I create a new item, it's invoice one. And we could say that the ID of the person over here, right, uh, we know that it's P1. Now there's ways of filling in this foreign key. You could have a pop-up or you could spell out the person's name. There's 20 ways of doing that. I'm just trying to mechanically show you that we can establish a connection here, right? And so say that I put uh, P1 right there. There's an establish a connection now, but you cannot see it. The relationship, these, this is not case sensitive, not case sensitive. So we'll show that as well. Um, 
you can make it case sensitive, but it's not case sensitive right now. So we can say that we're going to buy a, <laughs> you're going to buy toilet paper <laughs> for the loo. If you're in the UK, it's the loo, I guess, right? Otherwise, in the US, it's called the bathroom. And so the toilet paper, if, you're, if people are hoarding the toilet paper, it's $20 for a, some toilet paper. And uh, so that's a $20 right there. Kind of funny. So, so, how do, so if the relationship is active here, how can we see it on this side? We go back to layout mode over here. We can uh, say, uh, I want to bring a field on the screen right here. Um, but how do you do that? How could you see the field? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a field down on here. And I'm going to say, it's going to show me the fields from the current table people, but I want to see through a relationship. And if we had no relation set up, it would be blank, but I'm going to say through the invoices relationship because we connected those two. And now I'm going to show the item and the amount. I'm going to option, I'm using the option finger or alt finger, I think, on Windows. I drag it down, it allows me to make, duplicate it, and then it pops it for me. So it's kind of a speed thing that you can do. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. I'm going to go to browse mode. So now you can see that um, that the that the data of toilet paper and twenty dollars, the data is only over here. Over here, it is displaying it for you through the relationship. So it's a visual thing only. It's not being stored in that table. Does that make sense? So if I go to layout mode, you can tell you have a related item because there are the two little. If I zoom in here, there are the two. Whoa, that's really overly scrolly in terms of speed. There's these two items right here. And they have the little uh, colon, semicolon, whatever those are there. I always get, I lose track of which one that is. Um, one of you, I'm sure, will be happy to tell me uh, which that one is. Um, so anyway, so that is showing the one related record. And you go, well, that's really great. But what if we're over here and we have, you know, say there's uh, invoice two and it's uh, uh, some milk and it's you know, $3 for a gallon of milk. And then I come over here and it's, um, you know, item three and it's, uh, I will say it's a uh, juice, right? And it's $2 for juice. And so suddenly we have additional items over here. If I go to a table view over here, now you can see that we have invoice one, invoice two, invoice three. And this one is connected relationally to this over here, but the other two aren't relationally connected. And so if we did connect them, we went over here and we put in people one, right? Person one, which is the ID over here. Now notice it's uh, this one, Sally. Maybe we do this one right here as person two, right? Now if I click that, it will appear down here. I click out. As soon as it saves, it commits it. It realizes there's like a lock on and it'll display the information. So it will establish the bridge, the lock on, then it'll grab this data and display it for you here. The data lives over here, but it's going to show it to us over here. I'm going to click out and it displays it, okay? Now, how do you display more than one? That's where the portal comes in, right? So I'm gonna do that real quick, and then we'll make sure that we uh, take questions. We have the cockeyed uh, optimist. Is that optometrist or, that's optimist, cockeyed optimist, right on. Uh, could you cover composite keys? Yes, we will cover multi predicate keys and composite keys, I guess, is another term for that. Um, so um, you want to see multiple relationships here real quick. I'm going to go back to layout mode and you see this over here. I'm going to just move the, oops, I'm going to move these out of the way. I want to put a portal on here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to grab the portal tool. I'm going to put the portal on here. I'm going to say show three items. It says what relationship do you want to use? I want to use a relationship where we connected to invoices. Okay. And so it's going to show three items. Although you could change it to whatever you want to do. I say OK. And so, uh, and then it'll ask me, what would you like to show? Well, I could just grab and move these up there, right? And, and so you could actually redefine them and put them up here automatically. Or you could just drag them up here. I'm just going to do it this way. So I have the item here, right? Uh, put that in there. So that's the item. Doot, doot, doot. And then I'm going to grab and move this down. Give us a little more room. I'm going to put a mount over here. And I'm going to put a mount up here. Now, what's really important for all the basic mode, the basics of what we're doing, uh, and only when you get advanced would you break the rule I'm about to tell you, but 
right here, that's the relationship we're using, right? It's, and these right here should be driving off the same relationship. So that's driving through the rela invoices relationship. This one right here is driving through the invoices relationship. And the portal itself is driven through the, all three have to be the same. And we're in basic learning mode. So there will be times to break that rule, but you'd have to know when that would be. So if I go back to browse mode, command shift, or command control B, um, so now we're seeing the related items here. So you start to see the related items. So P1 connects to these two P1s over here. Now, um, multi-key, not multi-predicate key, but multi-key is the idea that you can put, I believe I have this correct, the terminology, I have to go, kind of go back and look at this. But the, ter the terminology, the important thing to understand is you can have a value list in the key. So what if you said that I also, because this person, for whatever, understand that primary keys, you'd never want to do this, but I'm demonstrating this. Um, you come up with, um, yeah, let's just leave it. Let's come up with a new file. Let's do that. So I'm going to, uh, a new table. So we're going to add a new table. You'll like this. This is going to get to uh, cockeyed uh, optimist. Um, I first, I, first I thought it said cockeyed optometrist, but then uh, <laughs> you're not the cock, because that would make more sense. Uh, yeah, so I will, oh, pivot table in the PDF. Yeah, that's only going to, you know, we already have the videos on that one. Um, I'll probably reference the video on the pivot table. We'll get back to that towards the end. Um, so what I'm going to do is, because um, I'm getting requests over here <coughs> for Okay, he just, retra he just retracted the request. You guys are really hard. So you get me going on a question, then you delete their question, right? So, um, yeah, so I, if you delete the question, that means you don't care about it anymore. But if you want me to think about it for a future event, definitely post it here. That's totally uh, great. Um, all right, so file, manage, database, right? We have people, we have invoices. Let's say we have, we got a table and we have, let's call it reporting. And let's say, I'll just call it reporting month. Actually, you can just call it reporting in general because of what I'm going to do with it. So I'm going to say create the table. Once again, of course, it sticks its five standard fields in here. Um, I'm just going to call this ID underscore reporting so we know it's unique. And, and we create it. Okay, and so I say okay. So now we have a new layout. It create every time you create a table, it creates a layout. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a new window, and then I'm going to move us to reporting. Okay, and so I'm going to bring this up here like this, and I'll create a new record here. Uh, what did it do? That should have populated that, right? Or did I, did I, oh, I created a new field. Eh, I didn't hit rename. You guys caught that. I didn't catch it. Like, why is that empty? Okay, so hang on a second. Let me go, let me go here. Let me delete this one. Delete. Yes, delete. I'm going to call this, should have been a rename, not a create. ID uh, reporting this is the primary key. I'm going to change it, not create. And then I'm going to create a, a, uh, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to say month. I know that you would want everybody to do this probably month and year, but I'm just going to do month. And it's going to be a, uh, a text field. I'm going to say create. I'm going to come over here. So we have this month field in here. We also have this uh, field in here. Uh, I go back over here. We'll have the, uh, I, uh, the ID reporting. I go back to browse mode. And so we have one record, and that's that uh, UUID again. I'm going to leave it in here. Now let's say that we want to see the invoices for a certain range of records, for example, right? Um, and so what you want to do is, of course, we need a date over here, right? So if I put date field and I put a date in, I'm just going to put a date. But then in my effort to be uh, do calculations and stuff, what I want to do is I want to say, um, I will say month, year, reporting. You could say for reporting, but I think for is a, a uh, is a um, 
reserved word. Um, if you wanted to do it that way, you could put it as underscores in here. So say month, year, for reporting. Um, so I uh, create that as a calculation. And so you'll like where this is going to go. This is going to answer uh, the optometrist question. I had a good question there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want the, there's a month function that gives me the name of the month. So I want the month name. And I want to use the date that we had defined already as the date that the, this uh, uh, invoice was created. And then I'm going to say, and I want, um, I'm just going to not make it over. I'm just going to say year. And so give me the year of the date as well right there. So we have the, so what it's doing is extracting the name of the month and the year. So once again, name of the month, year, and they're going to be concatenated together as a single string, right? And so we say, OK. And then I go back to OK over here. And so then if I go over here and I put today's date in there, what you're going to have is things that start to look like that. And if I do 3, 6, uh, 2020, then of course that would say that one. And then this could be, uh, you know, I could say uh, 1, uh, you know, 22, 2020. And so you get the idea. So it's building that right there for us, right? So that's pretty neat. And so what we could do over here is we could say, I want to see um, a range of records over here. I want reporting on everything from April. Um, and, and you could say, well, let's, let's set that up. So we have to go back to file, manage, database, and uh, relationships. And now I have this new table right here. And I'm going to say, well, I have the month here. Um, but it's really month and year. I will rename that. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say month, month, year. Okay. And I'll change that. And I'll go back to relationships. So I want to connect the month and the year to that calculation field we created right here. So I'm going to say month and year right there. I say, okay. And so then, of course, um, what I need to do is we're going to have probably more than one record. So I'm going to need to go to layout mode over here. I'm going to have to draw down a portal right here. Click on that, draw it out. Uh, the relationship I want is, um, now it's a little confusing here, but I want the uh, invoices. We're in the current table reporting, and we want to get the invoices from the current table. And that's great. Um, and then we just say, OK, great. Four, four, four line items like that. I want to say the item. <laughs> I could say the ID of the person. I could say the item. And I could see the amount. We'll keep it simple for the moment. Um, I make it a little bit bigger. Uh, the amount's there. Actually, that's not too bad like that. Of course, there's no labels on these, which is really great. So that sucks. Hang on, double click. I don't want people being totally confused. So we're building this out once again. Um, I'm just telling it to create the labels. I must have not had that enabled. I'm going to grab and drag it down a little bit, give us a little more space. Now, here's where it gets interesting. So we want to have a report on April, and we would have a pop-up or logic or whatever we do. We say April 2020. And it, uh, what did we do wrong there? It just showed us everything. Malfunction, malfunction, malfunction. What did I do? Hello? Invoices. I'm in reporting invoices. So this is where we screw things up and it showed us everything. So now we get the triage. That should have worked. I really kind of bummed I broke that right on the first pass. So it should match. It matches there. Do we have a number field or a text? Oh, you know, I know exactly what that is. I went to invoices. When I define the calculation here, it's a number. It's supposed to be text. So when you get bizarre things, you have to... Uh, Make sure you have it work because it shouldn't have lo locked on to everything. It should have given me just one, right? So we'll try browse mode. Now it's giving me just the one. So if you have like a text and a number, then um, unexpected things will happen and you're not going to get what you think. So once again, the troubleshooting, establishing the right fields and make sure the types are compatible. And so we have toilet paper here and that's April. And of course, if I change it to March, right, then we get the other record. And you're like, that's really great. But... Um, cockeyed optimist or optometrist, I'll call him the cockeyed optometrist, he or she asked me about, well, what about if you want a multi-key, uh, a multi-key, not a multi-predicate, a multi-key. And it's what you can do is you can have a value list. So if I press the return key right here, 
and I put April right here, it's going to attempt not to lock on the whole group, but it will take each line individually and attempt to match it. And so it will actually give me two records. That is cool. So that is a, um, a multi, what they call multi-key, right? So there's multiple values or a value list in here. Um, and you can, and, then, and the list can go. In fact, we use this technique for those of you who watched audit trail on the audit trail video, which uh, if you want to know, David will put the link to the audit trail video. You can watch it on Vimeo. But Calvin, when someone does a search on audit trail, one of the things we want to track is say someone is at a hospital and they're a nurse and they want to search for everyone with the last name of Cruz because they want to find out where Tom Cruise is having his surgery. Um, they do a search for Cruz and they say they have 20 people that the hospital deals with with the last name Cruz. Um, it actually logs all the IDs of those into one field, right? And so it's a multi, it's multiple values in the key, a multi-key, right? So that's how that works. Now, if I was over here and notice that I had um, these, these are concatenated together. If I wanted to come over here and change these, say that you had, um, let's say I'm going to edit this. I'm going to go to options over here. I'm going to edit this calculation. Let's just say this is just going to be the month, right? There's the month right there, so I could say month for reporting, change it. Or I did year, and this will wrap that question up for him. I say create year of reporting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep it text to keep things from being crazy. So say you had a calculation that looked like this, right? So we had the year on one, um, the date on another, right? And um, well, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do it that way. So year on one, uh, the, the month name on one, the year on the other one um, over here, right? And then over here, notice nothing works anymore. So realistically, in most situations, you wouldn't have things gl uh, grouped together like this. So you'd end up with, for reporting, you'd have the month, right? <laughs> right, change. And then you'd have the year change or create, sorry, in that case. And so what you're going to do then is that you realize that you have month and year, and you have month and year. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the month up here. I'm going to put the year next to it. So it's, um, I guess I could label it. I'll put the label up there. I'll just kind of slide it up there. Does that make sense like that? And so, of course, now... Um, it's broke, right? So we don't know what to do. So what we do is that we, we change the way the relationship is set up. We go File, Manage, Database, File, Manage, Database, and then we go to Relationships. And this relationship right here becomes a multi-predicate, multi-predicate relationship. So it's going to be a month for reporting to month. Right, so those are that was already there because it was kind of recycled. But we also we don't want the month from this year and the month of last year grouping together. I mean, unless you wanted that. Most of the time you're gonna want the month and the year. So I'm gonna say I also want the year and the year, but I want to add it. So it has to match both of these items together. So that's your multi predicate uh, right there. And so you'll see the uh, little the feed over here change. And so now the behavior is essentially the same. I could come over here to April, and I could come over here to 2020, and now you're going to get a uh, lock on for the one record. Now if I put over here uh, March, what will happen, right? See, it's combining the combination of that, right? You see that? So it takes this one in combination with that and this one in combination with that, and it finds it, right? So pretty neat. So that answers the cockeyed optimist or optometrist uh, um, question and answer. So um, I met uh, I, I, I think is looking at, I'm looking at questions over there. Um, the Twitch put most of the time right now the, Let's see, how come you enter month date? Uh, it will give you month and date. It will give you April. I thought it would give you. OK, well, OK, so I did month name. Month, there is a difference between um, the function called month name and month. So if you just do month, it gives you the number. If you do month name, it gives you the uh, name. So that answers Top Cat's question. 
Uh, okay, so back over here, looking at the questions. Um, cockeyed optometrist, we got him taken care of. Um, how to use a re uh, a lookup? All right. Well, we okay. So in order to have the conversation, we have to talk about lookups. Uh, uh, Garrison says, "My dude, <laughs> I don't know. Is that current lingo these days? My twenty-year-olds have not said that to me. Although since I'm their boss, they don't really. They wouldn't say my dude, or I might beat them with a stick. Um, my dude, what's up, yo? Um, I'm trying to have inputs I make to go to different sheets through a drop down. Okay, two different questions. Let's deal with the relationship question first. Um, okay, composite key. Okay, yeah, so he's using that term. I don't, I've never used, I don't use the word composite. So cockeyed optics was saying a composite key is the same as a multi predicate. Um, I, yeah, I've never used the word composite, it's just different terminology. Um, so moving along, um, we're looking at the idea of uh, the relationships um, and relookups. And so lookups. So let's talk about this real quick. And this actually, I was kind of thinking about doing this, but it didn't happen. So here's what, what's interesting. Here's what's interesting. Um, say that actually over here, this isn't people. This is, let's change the table name here. I'm going to change the scenario. I'm going to say this is a company. Okay, change. And what I want to do is in, in fields, I want to say that really it's ID company. So we say, okay, I need to set up the situation so it logically makes sense. So I'm going to be, I'm not going to take questions just for about five minutes here. So we're going to get through this. So the name of the representative of the company is this person here. I'm going to come down here. We really need uh, the company name. And so I'm going to define another field called company name, I guess. I'll say create. That's a text field. I say, okay. I say, okay. So the comp, hello. Um, so the company, let's say, is Apple, okay? And uh, Apple, one of our customers. So we do work with Apple. We do a lot of companies, small companies, big companies, do all sorts of work. And so here's Apple. And then Sally is belongs to Chevron. It's another big company. I'm just using names that you would uh, probably recognize, Chevron. And that's an oil uh, producing company. And so you got Apple and you got Sally. Now, over here on the invoices, we really need to see the name of the people on the invoice. So what you could do is I'm going to go back over here to a, f a table or a, uh, a form view, right? So up here at the top, we have we have form view, list view, and the table view, which is useful for kind of triage and seeing stuff. I'm going to go back to form view. What I'm going to say is I really need to have a company name. So we know that since there's a relationship to the company, we could see the company information, right? Um, and so, and so what you could do is you could come over here. I'm going to do, I'm going to put the reporting stuff over here because it's kind of peripheral on the side. Uh, put that one over there too. So there's the reporting stuff. So here is the date. The date would kind of go towards the top somewhere. We want the date up there. I, when I normally have a data view, or a, a, a form view, I get rid of the headers and the footers because they just serve to confuse the hell out of people. Um, you need headers and footers on list views, um, things like that. So, so we have ID people. Now remember, it's not people anymore. So I'm going to go and change it to ID company. And I'm going to get rid of that comment right there. Change. OK, so there we go. So we have ID company. And so the idea was that we need to be able to see relationally see or we need to see the name of the company who bought the item. So if I come over here, um, I'm going to drag a field down. I can say, show me the uh, name of the company. Uh, duh, 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 duh. I go to invoices, go back to company, show me the company name, right? And you're like, oh, okay, that's great, right? Um, and so, <laughs> uh, and then let's also take a look at the, I'm going to do an option drag, so it's going to make a copy of that. I also want to see the name of the person. So I'm going to go into field definitions real quick, file, manage database and I'm going to come over here to the uh, company once again I'm going to say name 
of representative. So just really clear to people what the name is. So that's the name of the person that represents the company, right? Because whenever we deal with Apple, Chevron, we don't actually Apple deal with Apple generically. It's always Fred at Apple in the marketing department or Sally at the uh, sales division of the West Coast in the Chevron sales department, for example. And so um, I have the data here. So as I attach a relationship over here to P1, the uh, company name is Rick, um, and that relationship should display the information, which it doesn't seem to be, do do do, from the company from invoices. Yes. Okay. So let me check the relationships. It didn't work, but probably I jumped ahead and didn't check my relationships. So between these two here, we're attaching the ID company, right? Uh, but the ID company, back to this issue of whether it's a number or text field or what we're doing, ID company is indexed over there, okay? And that's in the, uh, and if I come over here, it's ID company text over there, okay? That should work. I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here in real time. So, uh, invoice three, invoice P1, what am I? Mine. Oh, that's great. It hadn't refreshed itself. Little P1. Oh, is it suddenly case sensitive now? Why is it suddenly case sensitive? What did we do to cause case sensitivity to that? I, I will chase that one later. Um, as a general rule, um, yeah, I don't know why suddenly that's case sensitive. That's really interesting because it wasn't before. Hmm. All right. Well, there you go. I will have to, I'm not going to triage, triage that in front of everyone because it might be something really stupid. I will bring that back tomorrow and figure that out. Um, so we have Apple and Rick here. Now, what's important to understand is that this starts to get into real world applications. The question, the conversation is about lookups and relookup. And the issue is before you could even, I mean, it's like talking about, you know, what happens if I want to have a race car that goes to Mars? Well, the first thing we have to do is talk about a race car. We haven't talked about a race car yet. So a relationship is where you're seeing a live data through the relationship, and but the data really lives in another location. A lookup is conceptually that kind of idea, except it copies and pastes the data from the source to where you're at through the relationship. It's making a copy at the time you set up the relation at the time the relationship activates it does a one-time kind of copy and paste Does that makes sense FileMaker doesn't use the word copy and paste that's really in your mind what you should think so here's the problem so say for example that we have this order Apple orders uh, juice for um, for two dollars okay but down the road so so remember an invoice is a transaction in a period of time if you're in business once you have an invoice that's final, it's paid, and everyone kind of agrees it's like legit, it's kind of locked in concrete. But relationships aren't locked in concrete, right? Not necessarily. And so what happens is, is that you have over here, you have uh, Rick leaves the company, and Fred comes to Apple. And the problem is that when I change it here, it changes over here, it says that Fred at Apple bought the juice. Fred doesn't even know about this invoice. It's, it was five years before he ever came here. Does that make sense? And so because we changed Fred, all the items over here that were belonged to the previous person, you know, now have been changed. And so you have changed a, a frankly, in some places, a legal document that had to be kind of like almost like locked in concrete. That's what, what a lookup allows you to, to do. Instead of having a, um, a relationship right here to see the data live, what you want to do is make a snapshot and you want to do a lookup. And so you would actually do a lookup of the item, of the amount, the name, the company, all the things that might be locked in. Because think about it, what if the price changed in the future? Because the price is always change of things, right? And so Apple buys it for $2. In two years, it's $4. If you change it to $4, it comes in the system from the, pro say, like the product database. It would show that Apple bought the product for $4. That's f false. It's wrong. It's just wrong, 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 wrong. So you have to have that invoice kind of locks in and stays. So if you have um, the, 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 the dots like this indicates related data, it can change any time. But if you do a lookup, 
right? So what you would do is you'd come over here to the invoices, right? You would say, this is the name. We create a name field and a company field. And these would be lookups, right? And you say create. And then you're going to come over here to name. You're going to say options. You're going to say use a lookup value. A lookup value is a, it should say one time copy and paste at the time you establish the relationship. So one time copy and paste at the time, I'm, I'm actually looking at the screen, one time copy and paste at the time you establish the relationship. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to click on that. Um, I'm going to say starting with the table invoices because we're on the invoice. We're going to get the data out of company and we're going to at the time the relationship sets up we're going to copy into the from the name of the representative. Okay, And then we're going to do the same thing over here. So options Great. grab a lookup value. We're starting at invoices and we're getting data from company and it will make a one-time copy of the company name. And so what happens, and it finally gets to the background of the question that was asked by the gentleman uh, from 10 minutes ago, because <laughs> when you guys ask questions, sometimes uh, to make it the context relevant to everyone, I have to kind of explain this. So, so notice the fields are on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bring them up here and I can kind of show the uh, the lookup one right here, and uh, like that. Now notice they're blank. What did I what did I say the rule was? It's a one-time copy paste at the time the relationship like locks on. So if I break the relationship um, with the company, say I delete that, and it and notice it goes away here. Then I go back. I'll go back over here to browse mode so we can see this over here. We go back to P1, right? and I click right here, it establishes the temporary lock on, but it does a one time copy and paste. Although why is that Fred? Oh, they're backwards. Do I have it backwards? Oh yeah, my bad, sorry. I'm like, wow, why have we invert the data? That was really bad. So, um, so now you see it's locked on, but what happens in the future if Fred is replaced by Doug, right? Or, uh, Elzo, Elzo from Brazil. So we go Elzo is in here. And so Elzo takes over for Apple. Yeah, well, it doesn't change the fact that Fred and Apple bought juice for $2. It locks it in. So what does a relookup do? A re, uh, remember I said the lookup works at the time. the re, It's a one-time copy paste from the time the relationship was established. A relookup actually re-triggers all those datas to update for the found set. So if I said... Uh, well, there's a really good business reason that we want to update this record. So what I would do is I would, um, I would say, uh, I would do a find for uh, Apple. I'm going to do a find for Apple. And so we have Apple. We have one invoice here. But, you know, really, Fred started the invoice, but really they didn't finish the invoice. And Elzo came in right in the middle of the deal. And Elzo finished the order for the juice. So really Elzo's name should be here. So I could have a button here that says relookup. Or you can just click on the relationship, which drives it. You click right here. You go to relookup, or not replace, relookup. Now, the, both of these are extremely dangerous. Be very careful and activate them. But relookup, there's no undo for it. So we're going to say relookup, and it's going to refresh all the lookups. And of course, then it updates right there. So that is the relookup. So that's how that works. Why it's relevant is dangerous. Be careful with it because there's no one do. Once you copy and paste all that data over to undo it, you have to go to a backup of the database. You have to shut the file down, throw it away, re reload a backup off the server. If you don't have a backup, you are screwed. You are out of luck. There is no undo on this function. A re replace or a relookup. So back to questions. So uh, I have the questions there about future events. I'm going to ignore that for now. Absolutely not. Garrison is laughing about questions. Do to do. Let's see. Relationship issue for sure. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So yeah, Garrison's there. Hopefully this is helpful for you. This is very kind of basic stuff here. Um, feel free to watch this. So if you're interested in seeing this exact presentation, um, not cold, but kind of seeing it animated and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is tell you to watch the video training. Um, so if I go to FileMaker Video Training and I come down here to relation, you can actually type relationship right here, relationship, and hit the return key. 
And then what you do is you uh, see that we have uh, everywhere where relationships reference, but the relationship section is, I think, the 1100 section. Uh, let me go over here and scroll down. 1100. Do, do, do. Let me pause that. It's going to start playing. Pause. Writing scripts and then script triggers, database performance, relationships. So, what is a relationship? Table of occurrence is a basics, graphs, ERDs, what is a portal? So, we basically hammered through most of this. Now, if you want to watch it again, I would come here and watch it. If you don't have our training, this is where I tell you that this live video course is being brought to you by. It's not free, it's being paid for. Why do we pay for it? Because people are buying our training, they watch our training. If you like this, then you would love our training even much more so it's better because we can animate it and stuff. Um, and so we cover all this in great detail in all these videos in here in the 1100 section. So if you are interested in our training, everyone who already has our training, just give me a second. This is the commercial. Um, <laughs> if you go to uh, fmtraining.tv, you can come up and see the, uh, this is the website right here. It's fmtraining.tv and you have live training or right here and uh, you can see the upcoming events but you can also come over here to the bundle section and these are the bundles where you want to buy our video course this is the video only content right here uh, we get all the videos and this is where you get a copy of filemaker the latest version of filemaker the latest version of uh of uh various and sundry things and uh, so i got the uh, postman beating on the door i'm not sure what that's about so uh at any rate um, you can get a $50 discount on both of these items. If you are interested in that, send an email to support at RC Consulting. Support RC Consulting. Say you'd like the $50 off coupon discount. We will send that to you and you can get this. And then you have the training right here. Otherwise, you just kind of have to suffer through the free videos that we have, which are not super organized. That's part of the, the you know, if you want to organize and animate it, then you, you, you help us out and pay for this, and then we can bring you more great stuff. So I want to thank everyone who's bought the training. You people are awesome. Thank you very much. It helps us keep the lights and the power on, the internet on, and the live streaming. Okay, great. Um, yeah, Dust Cloud Run was uh, kicking around the idea of why it's case sensitive. I will figure that out. I'm not sure why it is or what it was. Um, it could be the UUI. I don't know. It's, it's, it, but see, part of it is an auto-defined field, an auto-entered field. The, the, the way you would normally make something case sensitive, this is an advanced topic. Excuse me. <coughs> Coughing here. Um, the way you would normally make something case sensitive, uh, so that's the reporting. This is the company. There's the invoice over here. Let me go into file manage uh, database. The way you would normally make an I item case sensitive, you go over here to options and you take a look at uh, storage and oh well that's why. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say this is why you would make it case sensitive is you change it to Unicode. Right? And what you normally do is you change it to uh, when you define a field, whenever you define these fields over here they're like default, like the, the, the indexing is the default, right? Or default for the language. In this case, is English for me. If you want to force a field to be case sensitive in general, like even if you're doing a find, like capital RIC with a capital R versus little r, you have to change it right here. So when, fi when, so when FileMaker auto defines these fields, they set the, uh, they set the uh, indexing, the way it encodes the indexing to Unicode. That makes it case sensitive. Normally you would just do uh, the default or uh, English or whatever. And then it doesn't, that doesn't happen. Let me just change that to default. Let me go over here, company, invoices. So let me guess it's over here too. Shoot, yeah, that's the way they roll with that. I did not know that. Um, but that's the only way to make it case sensitive, right? So in the back of my mind, I'm going, yeah, but do I really want to try to explain that in the middle of a live video. I mean, some things you just don't want to do on live TV, right? Because um, then you look like a fool. But uh, it's like, hey, Richard doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground, right? That's when I was a firefighter years ago, and I was 20, and I had a fire captain. I was a firefighter before. I'd been to burning buildings and dead bodies and the whole thing. And, uh, and uh, you know, pumping on people and CPR and all that stuff. Um, and I would remember this. Oh, you know, Carl, he doesn't know his ash from a hole in the ground, right? So the goal is you grow up and you learn more, and then you um, 
<laughs> you, you start to realize all this. So if I go over here to P1 and it's Apple, and if I do a little, so if I just break this, that goes away. Now if I do a little P1, it restores it. So we turned off the case sensitivity. So there you go. Awesome. Training is awesome. High quality, complete, 100% worth the investment. Yeah, I, I, I love that. 100% worth the investment, which it's free for almost everyone, right? So, so uh, I always like that, but people come to me and they go, well, starting point's really a horrible, you know, it's really expensive, it's really horrible. And I'm like, dude, it was free, free, right? And so, um, but yeah, if you would like to show your support for the training, then um, the video training is, oh, weren't, okay, the, the, the paid video training is awesome, okay. Elzo, now I got you. I thought you said the live training was was definitely worth the money. And I'm like, okay. So uh, that's really great. So questions, questions, questions. Happy uh, enjoying the content. Um, awesome. Uh, yeah, you could choose. Uh, David White says you could choose. Um, David White. You know, I know a couple David Whites. Um, I'm not sure which David White that is. Uh, month and year and a radio or check boxes. So that has to do with control styles. So we don't dealing with control styles today. That's more of a basic conver conversation. Um, so um, real quick, anyone here have any questions I want to ask about this? We never even got to the kind of the, uh, the anchor buoy part of it. This is, today is basic relationship 101. So the short version is, is that when you start off building relationships, then you'll start doing this, and then it gets more, you know, involved and gets exaggerated, and then it becomes a spidery, ugly mess of stuff, and stuff's connected everywhere, and that's called a spider diagram. Uh, as you start to kind of like really add more stuff to it, then we want to introduce the idea of anchor buoy. I guess we could cover that in another conversation. Um, we're kind of out of time for today. It's already two o'clock. Um, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so the anchor buoy is how you start to organize things. So this, let me put this in the back of your mind. If you're starting to build in your past where you're like eight or 10 or 12 of these things and, you're, and you know that you're going to keep adding to this, you might want to take a time out, breathe, right? And think about uh, setting up a relationship where it, things are organized. Um, and so if I bring up this, this diagram, oh my cow, why is it sideways? All right, so this is from, gets into some speed and performance testing, but I want to bring this to everyone. Wow, what is it being? Did I just crash? No, I didn't crash. I almost crashed. I tried to crash. That was very exciting. All right, scroll up here. All right, so if I, can I zoom in some more? Zoom. So when you start building a relationship, I'm going to go ahead and hide myself briefly here. So this is what you're going to start building. It'll be here. Um, and this is what you're going to have. And so this is not good. I mean, it might work for you, but this isn't great. This is a spider diagram. Then you start to organize things like this over here. That's called anchor buoy. There's a specific set of rules and oh, there we go. A specific set of rules and how you set up anchor buoy and why it's good. It's actually much faster than the spider diagram. Um, and there's performance testing that shows that. And so, A, it's easier to understand, easier to follow, and it runs faster. So I think that's a conversation for another day. Um, but I want to uh, just add any, uh, any questions or answers here. David, do we have any questions that I maybe missed along the way? I'm looking at YouTube here. Uh, whoop, hang on, there's some questions here. Uh, future thing, I'm going to skip that for now. Is there a way to prevent a relookup? Uh, the way you prevent a relookup is to lock out that menu set. Um, that's from uh, Ed uh, Burkle. Ed, awesome. Thank you for being here. Appreciate the question. Good question. Um, what we want to do is we want to, uh, we have a video that we did previously on custom menus. Watch the video on custom menus. I'm going to ask Jacob, Jacob, David Castillo, who's on with us. David, please find the link to the Vimeo for custom menus and put that in here. Basically, you want to design, um, basically, custom menus allows you to, like, normally, if you were going to do the relookup, we were in, um, is this invoices? Yeah, this is, no, that's not invoices. 
this is the invoice you can what you can do is notice how there's menu controls and things up here you can hijack those with custom menus you can take them over and hijack them and suppress them and so that's what you would do you would actually literally create a new records menu and turn off these items notice that they're gray now but that's because I'm not clicked in if I click in then click back here they turn on I mean this is literally like a nuclear weapon waiting to blow stuff up so um, yeah, so turning them off is a great idea. Um, also, telling users not to delete records is a great idea, too. Um, and so taking over the menus, hijacking them, preventing that is a really great thing. I highly recommend it. Uh, check out the custom. The, because the menus are paying the ass, let's not kid ourselves. It's not a great look for, for Claris the way they built that years ago. And they've never really decided to invest to fix it. So um, that being said, Check out custom menus video. Hopefully David will find that. There it is right there on uh, Twitch. And then hopefully you cross post that to the other site as well, which he did. Good job, David. So watch that video. That's how to prevent people from doing that. Uh, David White says training is awesome. Yes, we greatly appreciate it. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Ed is an in-house developer for a fire district. That's Wow, we must have a big fire district if they have a paid FileMaker developer. Um, yeah, so I worked. Uh, so Ed, if you uh, if you were in the fire business, I uh, I was a uh, on a, a Cal Fire engine, a Type Three engine. If, if people don't know what a Type Three engine is, the size and configuration of an engine, and uh, and Cal Fire is always one of these aggressive organizations. I remember going into places where everyone was was hauling ass out because they were scared to death. And Cal Fire goes in there and kicks ass and saves the day. Cal Fire is a great organization. Political as hell like anything else. But when the when the rubber meets the road, you have a lot of good captains and engineers and battalion chiefs. And uh, yeah, yeah. And then Cal Fire also has some uh, helicopter folks who are uh, uh, kind of like a hell attack crews and they go in, they uh, jump out, they start cutting line, they hook up the bucket for the helicopter. Although they're getting new uh, Blackhawks, Firehawks, really cool. So anyway, if you have unlimited money, you get a nice fancy helicopter to go with your fire uh, station. So other questions. Don't get me started on fire. I love that business. It was a, I miss it. It just... Uh, yeah, politics and stuff and I could get into that, but the... Uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah, politics. And so I'm here. I run my own company. We have 25 staff, and there is no politics except people above me, and like it, Claris. Then there's politics, but largely it doesn't. Uh, I don't have to worry about it too awful much. Um, someone doesn't like the way I look, or I don't cut my hair the right way, or whatever. So I make sure that we try to have a politics-free uh, zone in the company. It's really hard when you have 20, 30 people. But uh, anyway, all right, cool. Well, uh, we are going to pick up the conversation tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's live training topics will be um, dynamic window content. No, no way. So this is the one I was thinking about. So uh, differences between card styles, popovers, uh, custom dialogue, sliding shelves. We talked about that. Slides and tabs. We're just going to go through all these and kind of the benefits and the attributes of each one. Um, there will be times you want to use one over the other. Um, it should be a good conversation. I look forward to that. Um, it was kind of supposed to be an open Q&A a little bit. Um, and so we will try to do open Q&A on that. Uh, but it, it should be fun. Definitely tell your friends, FileMaker people, let them know about our training. Let them know. The more people that come here, the better we can make it. Frankly, it, and it pays the bills to keep the lights on, which is always awesome. All right? And just so you all know, we're working on the next version of the FileMaker training that will be coming out. So if you have a, a subscription, you renew it, you'll get that training in May when it becomes available. I say that in quotes because I don't know what day that actually will be. All right. That's it for today, everyone. I appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow.
now. And the guys just stepped up the whole way. Calm, cool, collected the quarterback. Great read, good patience. More importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Trying to rally down 10. 9.25 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot, goes step. Stands in, throws it left for Amendola. Reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Rolling to the 9. Oh. Slightly behind him, but Danny makes the grab.